Welcome to our spoiler discussion of Halloween 2018. Here we're going to go into more thoughts of what we didn't talk about in our non-spoiler review, which uh, you're welcome to check out for those of you who haven't seen the new one yet. And so basically, to go into detail, like we already said in our non-spoiler, this movie, we were really fucking... It was worse than I thought we would. Yeah, uh, but I, 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 it was worse than yeah. what we thought it was. So let's start from the very beginning. So this movie actually opens like you would expect, where it's in the insane asylum in Smith's Grove, where you got these two investigators that go in there, the, these journalists that are trying to find out more about Michael Myers and why he kills and everything. Now, I will admit, this opening scene is, is kind of suspenseful, and yeah. it is kind of... Uh, creepy because basically I even like the title card yeah in the way it did yeah because basically these these two people they go inside and they're 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 talking to Michael Myers and the guy brings the mask that he has um, and basically they're trying to get inserts from him and try to get him to talk mm -hmm. while this happened you get the crazy people that are around him and everything and the way it's laid out it's like a checkerboard like mm -hmm. he's the the pawn in like in chess or something yeah and uh, they're trying to get answers from him, and they can't. They realize he's not going to talk, and they're all chanting. And the and guy, stuff. and the yeah, and the guy loses his cool and yells, and then that's when the title card. Comes. Yeah, which I thought was a, was effective yeah. opening scene, especially when the the pumpkin grows, grows and comes into back. It, yeah, as a metaphor coming back. Yeah, I which, did like. You know what? That's ironic. They should have called this fucking movie Resurrection because of the way the the title card comes up. I'm like, Resurrection's actually being dead and being brought back. Well, I'm sorry. His well, okay, Resurgence, I guess, yeah. which is a stupid title, but it would have made more sense. They put a subtitle on it yeah especially since we got enough michael halloween films called halloween yeah that's halloween. what i'm saying i'm gonna get lost i mean halloween's are, i don't know i'm losing count my halloween fucking... michael returns or yeah. something like that they could have done that you know yeah well anyway. actually it was called originally titled self titled halloween returns yeah the, the cool. test poster with michael which was a cool poster with the leaves where it's half leaf looks like fall leaves and stuff yeah and the title was actually uh, self uh, it was not self titled it was actually called uh, Halloween Returns. Oh, okay. And yet they didn't go with that. It would have been cool. Uh, but oh, anyway, for the mixture of so you don't get it mixed up with Turn of uh, Michael Myers, but then you call it Halloween and you mix it, it up with so three fucking movies. Yeah, <laughs> called Halloween. So <laughs> yeah, you mix <laughs> at least with Returns. You didn't say Returns of Michael Myers. You just call it halloween returns yeah so it wouldn't have never been that's what i'm saying but you know mixed up but basically the rest of it deals with the journalist going to go interview laurie strode who's in a in a kind of a similar environment like house that's uh like the, the way it's shot in the woods and stuff reminds mm -hmm. me of the house from halloween 2 rob zombies halloween 2 the way it's out in the woods and stuff it's like a yeah it's, house. it's it's more but secluded, it's a more secluded yeah. and it's got what's well, yeah mm -hmm. and it, it's got like it's it's armed with like like uh Booby security traps, traps yeah. and, and stuff like that yeah um, in surveillance, and they go in there and they talk to Lori Strode about this and everything. And they're basically and everything. saying, like, you know, we spoke to Michael. We need. Can you possibly talk to him? Yeah, because and this this really begs the question because yeah. it really feels to me that there was something that they were going to go for in the script that had something related to Lori Strode with Michael Myers because the way that she's talking made you think, you know. Why could you fucking include the brother thing or something related to her? Yeah. You know? I still wish they would have added two, man, because it would have made more sense of her craziness. But, yeah. oh, well, I guess I can't get everything I fucking wanted. Like, yeah. So, anyways, yeah, basically she's really combative and saying, you know, basically he's not a human. I want him dead. He's, he's the actual boogeyman. Yeah, he is the boogeyman, which I wouldn't call a guy who just probably randomly killed and he's just probably just your average American. We got enough murders in this country, but uh, he, I mean, I, that's what I kind of get thrown off that he's just so standard. Yeah. Because he becomes a guy who just killed a bunch of people every day. In fact, we're probably doing this review and some dude's getting mad at his family. He's killing his whole family. So what makes Michael Myers so recognizable if he's a humanized yeah. stuff? And why would they want to resurrect a story all of a sudden 40 years fucking later? Of this guy. Well, true, yeah. I, got but I, get, I don't know. I just felt like it was just, okay, just whatever. Well, anyways, they can't get answers out of her. They're, they pretty much go on about their day. And then they and then they start to realize that well while she's talking to him and stuff they said that they're actually transferring him to another facility which yeah. that right there I have a fucking problem with because you're talking about a guy who's been in prison for four, or been in the same asylum for forty years why in the fuck would you want to transfer him to another prison yeah. that doesn't make any sense yeah because okay before we get into any farther there's also a doctor that they introduced at the very beginning of the film who's mm -hmm. basically been looked over Michael Myers for the last yeah. like forty years. He became well. another Loomis. He, was, in he fact, actually worked with Loomis. Yeah, he was. Uh, he was uh, 
intern for Loomis. Yeah, after Loomis retired, yeah. which they do mention Loomis, like that he basically, re they don't know how, what caused his death, but he died and he took over after yeah. he after They're he saying died. of old age, yeah. cancer, or um, something, something like something that. Like that. But yeah. they get that going on and then basically... While this is happening, you also get introduced to Laurie Strode's daughter, um, who's played by Judy Greer and her husband, and they have the, the, the her daughter of her own, who is basically the one that we follow throughout because she's yeah. basically the new Laurie Strode. And it's funny because this one actually reminds me so much like Rod Zombie's uh, Halloween, where you get Laurie Strode with her Strode, you know, her parents, yeah, oh, or adopted parents, and basically Judy Greer reminds me of the 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 wife in that movie, and then. Her husband, talk, the way he speaks about dirty shit, kind of talks dirty for a guy that I didn't think in that kind of home would talk. Yeah. Like, openly talking to his daughter about sex and, and like, yeah, oh, damn, my dick got hurt. And yeah, stuff like that. I just didn't, that's what a lot of people said they didn't like about Zombies version. It was just too much un unnecessary cussing. But this one does the exact same saying. fucking thing. It's like, how is this so different? how can you like how can you praise a fuck out of this and hate the Rod Zombie for doing it? Yeah. It does the same exact shit in this one with the I'm I'm talking about the Lori Strobe parents and basically yeah, you get the same format on that too because you, you get the the daughter like yeah 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 mm -hmm, I'm going to school yeah and then she becomes she actually reminds me a lot about the Rod Zombies Lord yeah and, Strode. and you know what this movie also kind of has a common with but honestly I'd rather watch that uh, this because I still got into it a lot of this movie reminds me a lot of Scream Four the way it's kind of going with the story mm -hmm. and how you have you know an older person that goes back to her hometown and stuff you yeah. got a, the, a teenager that's in high school doing with her friends and stuff mm -hmm. very similar and you got a killer on the same side yeah. but anyway going back to the story yeah basically the whole deal is that um, she's going to high school and everything and they're about to go to, to the Halloween dance and stuff like that of her friends mm -hmm. and this is when we get introduced the stuff that we really wasn't getting into it's when we get introduced to her friends and stuff like that yeah and this where, is your typical and I mean What's with every guy with long fucking hair in this movie? Everybody's got yeah. goddamn fucking shoulder length hair, and as I'm like, yeah, these, you know, I mean, they're, they're considered your your heart throbbies, but it's it's weird. I mean, the girl did fine, yeah. but the, her friends I couldn't fucking stand. I All of them not, were fucking yeah, annoying, they were terrible. Yeah, yeah, and so while this is happening, especially the chubby head, yeah, yeah. he remember that dude yeah. from Unfriended. Yeah, um, but anyway. Uh, the, while this basically as it goes along, they're they're trying to Lori Strode is trying to basically cope with the air idea because there's actually a point that I will judge like this scene from is that she feels like she wants to actually kill Michael Myers. She wants him dead. Where yeah. she actually wants to go to the Smiths Grove and actually put it into him. Yeah, and, and she, she's basically feeling guilty she was about plan, it. She had plans of where they where she was able to maybe see them pull out and she was going to be able to get a shot off and kill him. Yeah. That's what she was hoping for. Yeah, that's and, what I'm saying. And then she pretty much loses it and just balls and just, you know, goes in this panic attack and basically it, this is where this film really has a lot of issues where this is about I think around the time the editing gets it really does. bad. Yeah. Cuz then all of a sudden she sprouts up at a fucking goddamn restaurant with her or with her kids. It's like you were just a split second far away from that yeah. out and so fast. Yeah. <laughs> and this is where the editing is very choppy. Oh, and it gets worse because literally while this is happening um we literally get to a scene after this is happening where get, she's arguing with her get a kid and get a kid dad. and his dad that are going down the road which this scene reminded me also of rob zombies halloween too where mm -hmm. it's like out in the woods and stuff and yeah. you kind of got like a uh, hunter type people yeah. and or rednecks and stuff and they're going out and they notice that the bus pretty much crashed and then they see and they see all guys the in white suits oh, yeah. yeah now here's a big fucking question i have how the fuck did that crash how the fuck did, yeah. did did that happen that, that's the problem this film never elaborates other than a stupid fucking seminar that Michael Myers fucking uh, apparently got mad and fucking saw his opportunity so he went nuts and was ripping through you know steel and all stuff we were told that this was supposed to be a, a more humanized Michael yeah. Myers and that's why they didn't like the other ones. sequels yeah, because sequels. he's basically just a regular guy but yet you got him practically punching through steel and it shows the strength this motherfucker has and it's not human yeah. because you have people's fucking heads twisted in impossible ways I mean you got arms torn the fuck off just by ripping their fucking arms off and basically I have an issue with that because 
there's a backstory. Michael Myers, he actually went down without a fight. He actually, in the end, my, uh, Loomis never shot him. That right there is another fucking plot hole, be, or another contradicting. Yeah. Because if you remember, in the first film, the way that it ended, Hold Michael on. Myers... But the fucking, the whatchamacallit said he was shot by... No, his. no, I think... what. No, was. no, 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 listen, the, the movie contradicted itself. In the beginning, it's brought up that the, the, and the investigator said he was shot by a psychiatrist six times. They actually said that in the movie. And then the doctor that's kind of following him... Uh, the new doctor said that, or whoever it was, they said uh, the, the confirms Will that Will Patton was one of the uh, resting officers that night. He was a rookie, and just before he was about, uh, Loomis was about to shoot Michael to death, and and that was going to be the end of the movie. They changed the first movie's ending and basically said that he stopped him from shooting Michael and said no. That right there, like he For described, that right there is a big fuck you to the first movie. Because yeah. the first movie, if you remember, he got shot six times and fell off the roof. Yeah. You can't okay. tell me that that could... That, that this was becomes an continuity. issue. This is... Uh, what I'm bringing that up is the fact that Michael just punched through steel to break out of this bus. Slaughtered everybody in this bus. And you're talking about it was stacked with like ten cops. And I don't know how the doctor got on the bus. I didn't see him get on. Yeah, he I was. He, he, yeah, he, oh, he, was, he was on there. Yeah, I mean, I, he got on with them. Oh, I didn't notice that. Yeah, he got. Well, anyways, on um, yeah, he's basically. It was a weird fucking scene that you could say that he could punch through all that and do all that, but yet can't survive bullets because you want to humanize him. Which one is he? Is he a fucking killer or a fucking human? The movie you can't make up its own fucking rules about Michael Myers itself. What it if, wants to but do. You're, yeah, you're, yeah. It's trying to be respectful to the original movie. Make up your mind, movie. Yeah. So anyways, we do not get pretty much any kind of correlation of other than what I just told you yeah. in text by a, a quick uh, brought up by the guy. The one thing I will say what this scene does yeah. is... For the first time, because while this is happening, the, the, the father gets out with, and leaves the son in there. He gets out and investigates, and he gets killed off screen by Michael Wires afterwards. Yeah. Um, while this is happening, the kid gets out, and he, and he comes across the doctor, and accidentally shoots him because um, he's on there. And then he gets back inside after 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 uh, he was going to drive off. He's going to yeah. drive off, and he notices that Michael Myers is in the back. And this is the first time that I've ever seen where Michael Myers kills a kid. Yeah, he actually hear the crunch, and it's a child. I mean, yeah, this you're talking. This is about a ten year old kid. Yeah, he crunched his throat. I was like, damn, damn I ain't never seen that. I, I kind of like see. This is going to be a roller coaster review because there's while that things are going on that I like so much I didn't think I could possibly hate the bad yeah. as bad as I do that's the problem there's no eh, I kind of was a disappointment this shit the bad shit actually pisses me off it really outweighs a the bad, lot of yeah, the cool stuff well it's cause the bad spends nothing but saying fuck you fuck you Halloween fuck you fuck you fuck you fuck you yeah it's not saying oh it's we made a mistake the cynicalness is really yeah. where it kills it for me yeah cause it's actually saying fuck you to Michael Myers completely it's equivalent to saying Jason was a transvestite yeah and, or Leatherface was or, le or maybe say Freddy never burned alive he actually froze to death <laughs> <laughs> it's really changing everything that bad. How would you guys feel on that? I know you guys would be pissed. I just don't understand why no one's furious at the changes they're doing in this. That's what because I'm it's the like, changes that whatever I predicted the bad that they could possibly do to this, they literally did it in this movie. They did, yeah. yeah. And so as it goes along, we see that Lori Strode finds out about what happens and everything, and yeah. she's trying to warn everybody, including her daughter, uh, which was a weird scene because this is the part where you're kind of going back to the editing where it's she just pops out of different places. Yeah, like she's at her house, and then she's fucking at a dinner scene, and then she's freaking out of the situation, and then we go, then it goes the next scene where it's like, I swear it was fucking nighttime. And then it's the, the fucking, the daytime where the, we go back to the news reporter guys and they go to this gas station yeah, and Michael is driving and we actually get, this is actually probably one of the best glimpses you almost see of his face. Yeah. Where it shows him just trailers, looking in the window. Yeah. The, um, there, it's kind of mixed with me on this scene because we do get our first glimpse of uh, Michael Myers, like unmasked and stuff. Cause he's in the bathroom stall, yeah. which I have a con and I have a pro with yeah. this. I have a con. It's weird how he sporadically finds the yeah. reporters all the time. Yeah, it's yeah, like it's weird. Yeah, well, and it's what's weird is that I know this is supposed to be from the original movie too, like how they the way it's mm -hmm. shot. Tell me how the fucking dude didn't notice him behind him. That's my issue. I'm gonna bring up. I, I forgot to bring up. There's a this is a 
when they're outside before Michael kind of pulls up, it's a very busy gas station because it seems like it's a really crowded place because there's a lot of people out getting gas and yeah. shit like this. And there's a part where the guy's going in to pay, uh, the reporter guy's wanting to pay, or the girl goes in there and says, I need your bathroom. Use your bathroom. And in the background, you see Michael beating the, f killing the fucking, uh, through a glass, you see him killing the maintenance guy, the mechanic. Yeah. And then, like, it's like broad daylight in front of, like, th tons of people. It's like, no one heard that. Yeah. And Are then me? she walks in to the bathroom and then when the the, the guy reporter falls, you know, kind of goes in and sees like, you know, just to pay for his gas or whatever because she went to use the restroom. Yeah. He goes in there and then suddenly the gas station is really vacant. Yeah. There ain't no customers now all of a sudden that we were seeing outside, but yet all the cashiers are dead. <laughs> with their jaws ripped out, which is pretty brutal. Yeah, I'll give them that, yeah. And it's like, and then he realizes, oh, shit, everybody's dead in here. And then that's when he goes, he knows she's in the bathroom. And this is where we get Michael Myers walking in. And he saw the, and you saw a lot of promotions for the scene where he throws the teeth on the yeah, ground. and he's knocking on the door, yeah. pushing the door open and stuff. And we get the scene what's pretty brutal where she's trying to get away. And he, the dude tries to come in and try to fin him and off. Then he's like, and then Michael, he slams yeah, he his fucking him. head on the, do on the wall and stuff. Yeah. Which... That one I do kind of have a problem a little bit because two things. One, it we have seen a bathroom stall in, in two movies previously. Rob Zombie's Halloween, the first one, and H2O, which, mm. uh, yeah. And then you and get then the mechanic thing from part four. Four. And also with this too, the whole slamming thing. Um, I believe there was another film that did that too, if I remember. that was No, it was in uh, four where he slammed his fucking head like, Actually, no, no it, was, uh, it was in Rod Zombies 1 where he gets the suit from the guy. Yeah. And he goes, I'm going to rip your fucking face right off that mask. Yeah. And then he takes the dude from the Devil Rejects movies yeah. and he slams him his yeah. head and everything through the and stalls. And he stabs him. And then he stabs him. He did that to this dude but pretty he, much. He just didn't stab him. He, he just, just slammed his him. head. Yeah, and it's funny because the guy kind of pretty much acts like he's about to get back up and he's bleeding and stuff. Yeah, but he But just, then he just suddenly goes. Yeah, he just dies. Oh my. Dude, why were you looking around like you're gonna get up and do something? And <laughs> yeah, you fucking go, fuck it. Uh, the movie's already bad. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fuck but it. Yeah. And and it was then, weird. It was just odd. Why couldn't they not show like maybe his face get squashed and then we could just do away? Why? Why do we focus on him like he was really gonna do something? Yeah, because he saying. wasn't dead whenever he hit the ground. Well, and then he watched him, uh, Michael kill the kill girl. Kill the girl. Yeah. Yeah. And then this is where we pretty much get introduced to Will Patton's character. Well, he we get earlier, but you this is where Will Patton called. comes in and he gets called onto the scene and uh, he sees Laurie Strode there finding out and that's when she ends up going to again she's she just pops she's, up. She's, she's basically oh wait, the they did a scene uh, before where she was somewhere else and then the, that happened where it goes to Will Patton and he's seeing like oh god this is Michael and it's funny that a guy who supposedly haunts a town uh, the massacres he did 40 years ago People don't seem to really give a fuck yeah, that's about what I'm that he broke like, out. Because they were so quick about catching all the people that broke out with Michael. And then they were like, uh, the black, uh, the mayor or whatever his name is. He goes, oh, I ain't going to do nothing. He, uh, that's, that's, he ain't going to do nothing. He's probably weak. Yeah, that, I was like, who, no. what the fuck is this guy pretty much calling Michael a pussy? And no one in Haddonfield gives a shit yeah, about Michael. You have a killer that's been known so for why, Okay, years so ago. he's not haunting. No one's haunted by Michael? Yeah. Then why, why do we need to talk about Michael all the time? Like he's some force of nature if he's not really... Scared of it. Yeah, at if he's all, also by supposed to be the boogeyman, you would have yeah. made something out of it like that. But yeah. anyway, uh, as it goes along, we pretty much get your, you know, it, it goes into Halloween after that where there are trick or treating and stuff, and this is pretty oh, much. Oh, wait, before that, he picks up, he does the mask. Yeah, he puts the mask on, which is good because I one of the praises that we left out was I do like the look of the mask. It does, yeah. I like how rugged it is. Kind of reminds me of, uh, uh, like the, the mask from Rob Zombie's Halloween, just a lot more mm -hmm. like the original look, you know, just yeah. all like grayed out it's all rugged yeah yeah i really enjoy that um but anyway it goes into pretty much halloween after that where we see the oh this is where more editing happens from literally that then boom it's nighttime and then boom he's in the neighborhood and then boom uh he start he goes straight to the fucking he goes in in the trailers where he goes to the old lady's house ripping straight out of fucking two. two it literally jumps scenes and you're like where the, where the fuck, fuck are is, we? Where, dude, this movie's editing is so fucking off. Well, then he beats the fuck out of her, of course. You saw it. 
um, they kind of let you see it in the uh, TV spot. And yeah. Everybody watched it. And he crushes her. But what makes it kind of weird is the fact that I get the... Um, then he go, goes out and then he goes to a Nook's house. And it's all, all these trick-or-treaters, which the Halloween theme in this film where everybody's trick-or-treating is nice. It yeah, does, I do. It does get that Halloween fall theme feel and to it. I, I, and then he just randomly looks and he sees another person in their house he goes to kill okay michael's this threat of nature he just likes to kill everybody i agree with that okay well here's the issue is he randomly just picked these two houses then he just walked out and like he could have kept doing it and, and killing everybody in this whole neighborhood but he literally just says oh i don't want to do it anymore it's like it's why like, now he's he's so, so like now you get to the part where he's after, you know, he supposedly, it's ironically, he can run into Lori and her family all of a sudden, or the or the kids that was with, uh, that, that's part of the storyline is the daughter's friends. Yeah. It's just ironically, he went from those two and he knows about them. Yeah. Because he randomly looks for their house. And that's what I got out of it, because their houses are not next door to these two people who just got slaughtered. That's what I'm saying. They're in a completely another fucking street. Somewhere in fucking Hadfield. I'm guessing they only put those. I, I'm guessing he just killed them two because they wanted to rip off two. It well, like. he he did with the the. I get why they did it with the first lady, but what was his purpose other than okay? I get her his purpose killing her. She had a butcher knife. Yeah, he did. Yes. But okay, why did then he kill why the did he go to the other one? It seemed to me he was going to start killing everybody and slaughtering everybody in that yeah. neighborhood. But then he gets kind of like after he does the second girl wrong. Which I don't know what was his pur purpose to go in her house if he had a she was a babysitter. I guess I don't, I don't fucking know. know the one that he pulled the hair back. Yeah, he didn't get to the babysitter until like later on. No, so. no, no. The, I mean the other chick. Yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't know why he ended up killing her. Yeah, because just, he's a killer. I guess I don't fucking know. It's just weird, and it just comes out as never explained after he, why he killed those two, and then he randomly goes and looks for like more closer to Lori Strode's family's friends and all that. And then, you know, you get the girl, that's where you get the blonde girl. Yeah. And then the, the little black kid. And then it's basically, it's kind of doing the whole babysitter thing right here. And then, yeah. Uh, Much like the original. Yeah, and, and then and this is where we get to yeah some more cringy dialogue because the dialogue that's going on between this kid and her, mm -hmm. man, it just feels really just mm, the kid who was playing him was really not that good. Yeah, and, like, he's, he's kind of channeling without as much vulgar language and kind of hinting to go kind of vulgar, he's kind of channeling uh, Rod Zombie's Halloween version uh, of, uh, of Tommy, Tommy Doyle. Tommy Doyle, yeah. Yeah, where the kid was actually hated because apparently they thought he was annoying. He talked too much. Yeah. Was, they said that his lines wasn't what a kid would speak. Yeah. Eh, this kid's like that too because he's like, oh, well, fuck no and, and oh, hell no. Uh, on a separate note yeah. too, that's another thing I question. Like, what the fuck happened to them kids from the original movie? Because those are never brought up. Well, here's the thing is you get to the babysitter and she's babysitting this kid and then um, then she invites a boyfriend over, kind of like you You knew it was going to happen in the movie. Yeah. And then they're going to possibly have sex. And then she has to tend to the boy while the boyfriend goes out and fucks with the, somebody's uh, motorcycle, motorcycle yeah. in a garage. And then out, all these houses are, like, a lot of shit's going on in, like, this neighborhood. But the way Michael just sporadically comes out of areas, it would be cool if it was in one enclosed area. Yeah. That would make sense. Not a goddamn size of a fucking of a major town he just pops out this side of town and boom this side of town and then boom and it's like it leaves it as like no motivation i don't like that yeah it's just, you don't saying. know what he's really doing he's just suddenly in this girl, little kid's fucking closet and then the kid's like you know saying hey somebody's in my room or i've seen him he's wearing this ugly white mask yeah and then like I guess you could be 50-50 on this scene. I just don't get what Michael's doing. I'm yeah, lost. Other than to try to get to Lori Strode, I guess. I yeah. mean, but it still but, doesn't make sense. And getting to Lori Strode wouldn't make no sense because they said they got rid of that motive. So I really don't understand. Yeah, because I guess because But he, you can kind of see a motive because he's suddenly after a lot of people that's close to her. So I don't or get Or at that. least, I guess, because he kills babysitters. The movie really gets to where it's just trying to get to the point. That's the problem. Yeah. When they want to change the story, that's where I have the issue at. And basically, yeah, they, you get the girl dying. She, he comes out of the closet, which was a cool, effective scene. Yeah, and you get to see the... Yeah, and uh, she dies, and you see the boy... But, yeah, that's you the see the boy come up twice up the stairs. He goes down, he goes, oh, hell no, and he runs while Michael's killing her. And then she's screaming for help, and he runs back up, and he goes, 
fuck. Shit, no. And yeah. then he runs again. And I'm then, like, why do you keep you... going up the fucking stairs? Run. Yeah. And then the boyfriend comes in, which that pissed me off too, because the boyfriend comes in, make it look like he's going to go after Michael Myers. We don't even see his fucking death scene because he grabs a butcher knife like Michael Myers. So like, okay, that's kind of cool. You got a same knife that he uses. Well, here's we the don't thing. see that scene. There's a thing I don't understand was she screaming for help. He sees the little kid run. The kid don't don't think tells the boy what's going on. Uh, the boyfriend, what's going on? Well, he did. He uh, said that somebody was upstairs and they were trying to kill her or oh, something. Yeah, he yeah, told her. Okay, okay. I was wondering because it's like because that's why he went up there and everything. Yeah. Well, you find his body. We don't get to see him die. Yeah. And then we see Will Patton come in investigating yeah. all that. He gets a call for domestic disturbance. Yeah. And then we see a Lord Stoll finally. It's funny also, while this is all happening, there's not even a goddamn fucking nobody going around closing this town down. That's what I'm saying, because the mayor says something like, whoa, this is probably all bullshit. It's probably, well, how could one guy do proof. it? They have fucking proof, and they know this guy's history. That character fucking was, had like, nothing to do with yeah, this fucking exactly. story. He was just there to be a tough ass, trying to be like Duke from right. fucking... Uh, Dude, no, from, he reminded me more of that fucking mayor from Texas 3D. That's what that reminded him, me of yeah. him. But I'm just saying, he kind of looks like Duke from, yeah, uh, from Jason uh, Goes Jason to Hell. Goes Hell yeah. Yeah. Great and Duke. Yeah. Great and Duke. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, going back to it, Lori en ends up seeing what happens. She's trying to go look for her granddaughter. And the we also get to introduce to the uh, the Halloween party that's happening, which I'll admit, this Halloween party they set up is kind of cool. Uh, it gives you the feeling like Halloween and everything and, and all that, but... <laughs> And uh, kind yeah, of because have... you get the Lori Strode before that, you get the Lori Strode. Will Patton, um, well, you got to leave out that Will Patton gets a call right away for the uh, domestic, and he goes up there and he finds her body. This is where Lori Strode it just sporadically comes out, and she's like, Okay, I gotta go through the neighborhood, I know Michael's alive, and all that stuff. So she's going around waving her gun, telling kids this and her parents, Get inside, get inside now, and then. Um, she looks up and then fucking she sees, sees Michael. Michael and he's like, he's, looks like he doesn't really recognize her, but he thinks that she's some random person that he, that can see him. And he's like, yeah. So it's not initiating that, that Lori. It's not, it's not it, giving you that. It never does that. So you can just say that pretty much he doesn't even know who, if Lori's Lori from the That's what I'm saying. movie. Because he doesn't really go directly after her. Yeah, he's just a killer. Yeah. And then basically she tries to fire out and realize that's at a mirror, which I will yeah. admit that's kind of clever because it's actually in the mirror and it actually, like, you know, the bullet goes yeah. away. Will Patton pulls the thing. It's the girl that it was previously murdered and basically it leads into a cop scene where everybody's coming together. And this is when that fucking doctor, the, well, doctor. the doctor. The doctor finally comes in. Yeah. He's basically the new Loomis and yeah. he says that. Uh, she even actually calls him New Loomis yeah. in this movie. Or no, he, he worked with Loomis. Like, well, she called him, oh, you're the New Loomis. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's what she calls um, him. And then they believe that there's a way that uh, we can go after him. So it makes you feel like this movie just rehashing the original film. I mean, I do kind of like where like it leads you to believe that we're going to have a team. Yeah. And it, it's funny, like, after so many pe bodies are popping up, because at this point, I think we're at the body count of, 10, 8, 9, yeah, 6, 7. Something like that. And they now finally gonna go, Ah, oh, Michael's doing it now. Yeah. Fucking no fucking shit. Fucking really no shit, You had proof dumbass. in the beginning because everybody in the fucking God Green Earth knew Michael was on that bus. Yeah. And, and he was the only one, ironically, the only one that wasn't caught yet on the list. Hmm. You don't take a brain scientist. We got that person. Check. And they actually go through this list. They do. Check, they say check, right there check. in yellow. We didn't like, get uh, Michael Myers. Shit. Yeah, and he's like, yeah, but don't believe that. That's probably that whole boogeyman shit. Yeah, the fucking crap. dumbass mayor's like, it's uh, it's conspiracy theory and yeah, stuff. I'm like, but, oh my god, man, this is. I don't see how this fucking. At this point, I'm wondering how's this movie getting praised the way it is. This is so goddamn cringeworthy. It is, and then, at this point, the rest yeah. of it deals with what I like to call the greatest hits version done poorly of fucking other, basically uh, rehashing stuff from the other sequels. Well, it was. Go to the dance scene where we go to the dance scene, though, yeah. which okay, that's right out of fucking five because we had a dance party part in five and, and Halloween two yeah. Rob Zombies and everybody's all decorated. Yeah, the boyfriend that Lori's granddaughter was going to get with suddenly is not needed in this movie because they break up at this party and you never see him again. Yep, so that yeah. was weird. Okay, and then you get she goes and runs off with, with the, that the, shabby the kid. Cho chubby 
friend of that guy, but he has a hots for her. Her, yeah. Yeah, and they kind of run. He's like, you can do better and stuff. He goes, let's go. Let's get out of here. And basically, they're running through the neighborhood in this darkness. And at the meantime, now cops are on alert. Lori is taken to her house with her her daughter and everybody they, they just can't find the granddaughter so she's roaming around you know Haddonfield in the dark in Halloween which could have been a good story I could have probably gotten yeah. into more of that well if they also dug into one that thing more. that we left out in our pros in our in our non spoiler review there we also meant forgot to mention that with the daughter um there is a certain thing that we'll, we'll get into later that they bring up with Judy Greer's character that mm -hmm. I do kind of like because they show that um Judy Greer's character basically was going through similar stuff that Lori he did where she was being trained in the yeah. basement okay and stuff like let's that. talk about this real quick before we continue there was a, a during the reporters when they were talking about speaking to michael myers they elaborate on her personal issues that she lost custody of her daughter yeah because she was nuts and it shows in his back uh, story where it shows judy Greer when she's like eight years old and basically it shows in a little fast time capsule of how Lori's prepared her to become this big rambo soldier yeah and then it shows that they she lost her daughter and her daughter got taken away for good and then basically going back to the story um yeah so basically everybody's at Lori's house hiding they just need to find their granddaughter and basically the cops are out to look for her and then then she's with the chubby kid and they basically have a part where this chubby kid he's drunk he's a fucking annoying he's a bad actor yeah and he basically attempts to kiss her and she goes you know you got the wrong signal so she's like fuck you and then ran off because she thought he was gonna probably rape her or something she got pissed or whatever yeah she takes off and then like this is probably my most effective scene I, you like of michael part. and it has to do with the garage scene where he's out in this field thing and he's he's mistaken it as his neighbor because <clears throat> i guess they're in his area yeah. where he lives and he's thinking it's somebody he knows an older guy and you can see Michael really effective in the darkness, which is works. Really I like good. that. I really like yeah. the, the shadows and everything. It yes. really works. And its light just flickers. And in, every time it, the garage door light goes off and it flickers and comes back on, Michael's 10 feet closer to him. And he keeps getting closer until the final flick. And then you see Michael slab like a first like person. like a first person thing. Yeah, that I like that. Pretty, that was yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and then the kid gets so fucking scared. He's running. And then... He gets up to this wall and then he get fucking he gets stabbed, he gets impaled he gets his on fucking the fucking face, impaled on his thing, and he's sitting there screaming. And the granddaughter of Lori can hear him screaming. She runs back and she sees him all sh just shredded the fuck up, which was gory as fuck. And yeah. then next you know Michael just pops out of the corner, but there's a gate protecting, and she starts losing it because now she sees what her mom was scared about. Exactly. Yeah. And which then, I do like that. I do too. Yeah, and then that's where she runs and gets help. She runs and gets helped by neighbors and it, it just don't show the whole running to, uh, it does but then it disappears and basically she's getting you know handled like the neighbors are all cut on her and stuff that heard her scream and all that and will Patton's called yeah and then basically we see that the, the the doctor comes back to try to go with them so they decide to go with their granddaughter and uh uh will Patton's to uh, go back to where Lori's house is. Yeah. They end up finding out where Michael Myers is at, and, and basically, yeah. Will Patton just basically fucking runs him over. Yeah, and which he loses it. He says, "This guy's got to die." This now. basically, how many times we fucking seen a scene where Michael Myers gets run over? Mm -hmm. we did, okay, two, where he just stands there, he's like. Yeah, boom. We saw it. <laughs> now, technically, two did it the first one, yeah. but it was a fake Michael Myers, but he got ran over. Four did it did. where he got ran over, mm -hmm. and then we had fucking uh, H2O did it where Lori still ran over. It's like, you know, he's going to survive. <laughs> well, anyways, this is where the movie really started really throwing me off, and I didn't know what to think about the scene if it was a pro or a con. I didn't know. I was, it's a con because it copies this one movie, and I'm about to get into this deep right here. So, when they, William. Um, actually gets out and he's like, no, uh, we get this doctor and we forget, I forgot to mention this doctor, uh, the, the, the new one that took over for Loomis, he's actually obsessed and he gets to the point to where he's, he's like not, he's getting angry that he can't, he, he just needs to be Michael to understand Michael, I guess. Yeah. So out of nowhere, he actually slits, uh, with uh, Patton. Patton's throat and yeah, kills and him. Yeah, he fucking stabs him repeatedly. And yeah. I'm like, what the fuck, fuck are we doing? And I started thinking, is Michael truly dead? And it's going to be a metaphor that anybody can be Michael? Yeah, it's going to be a copycat. 
And I was like, what no, the fuck? No, it's not a copy. Obviously, it's Michael. But I thought Michael died in that scene. And That's they, what I'm saying. And he put on the mask. Because the doctor puts on the mask and becomes Michael. And he picks Michael up and carries him. Which I would figure Michael would be heavy. Right? This How dude, the, this dude's kind of like in a, wearing a cane. And so, <laughs> he's like, how the fuck you picked that motherfucker up? <laughs> he's a behemoth in yeah. this one, too. Yeah, he puts him right next to the girl. And then they go down the road. And he's, saying, and he's like, I need to be. I, I now I know, be obsessed with yeah, him. I know okay. who you are, Michael. Okay, guess what, movie? Guess what you fucking did right there? You copied literally fucking eight, uh, Curse of Michael Myers from Dr. Wynn in that movie. You really did the same yeah. bullshit that movie did. Because that doctor be ha becomes evil and they do the whole guy with the black suit and all that, the cult thing. Yeah. Minus the little cult thing, the reason why they did what they did, there's a doctor in there that becomes obsessive with what Michael, Michael Myers do. does. And he needs to become and a guess killer what? like him. Guess what? Much like Curse of Michael Myers, they do the same bullshit here where you have Michael Myers actually kill him much like Curse. Only difference yeah. is unlike Curse, which had a really fucking brutal... I thought literally he was going to control Michael. That's what I thought. I was like, I was like oh, oh, please I do not go dude, that route. you flatline if you do that <laughs> yeah. shit right here. And no, he, he it quickly turns south and Michael wakes up and then instead of touching the girl, which is the closest to, he wants to kill that motherfucker yeah, first. Which... That don't make no sense. He's got so much in front of him that can prevent him getting that guy, but he can just touch her Right there, yeah. And then so anyways, he kills he him, kills like, him. He, which is a good death scene because he, like, crushes his head right there. Oh, yeah. So you get to the part where he's actually kicking the seats in. This is where Michael actually is immortal because this is where we you actually get, see the him. The doctor gets out. Well, you get the police thing. If you ever been in a police car, that's bulletproof glass. Yeah. And he literally kicks it, like, twice, and that dude just gets crunched to the seat, and it just crushes this car. Yeah. And then, basically, they get out. And it's funny because while this is happening, these two cops are watching it from like yeah. down the street. All this and shit. That going right, on. okay, that right there. That's but let me uh, let's go in chronicle was, order. Yeah. So, uh, so he gets out. the guy out and the the, <laughs> the fucking doctor, and he actually fucking gory scene. Probably the most gory scene I've seen in the whole movie. He actually stomps in the fucker dude's head on the fucking dude's head and just crushes his brains, his eyeballs. Yeah. Now that was in Rod Zombie Two, Halloween which was two. yeah, and that was a good fucking gruesome scene in that. However, people bitched that they said it was too much. Yeah, but this one is the same situation. Only it was yeah. a lot more gory and everything. And everybody this praised this one. Yeah, the the the, the hypocrisy some of the people like about this film that's giving this an A plus, and that yet don't realize that everything is from the old movies. They exactly, hate. it just makes me laugh hard. Yeah, it's like are you and not? Then, and while this is happening, you got the two cops that are seeing what's going on, and right. then they end up going to see. Which those cops reminded me of the fucking dudes from Five. There's another on our checklist. Oh yeah, the fucking cops from Five. Instead of taking this scene seriously, they're talking about eating a sandwich. Yeah, I'm like, oh god. I, I I almost thought the fucking quirky music from Five was gonna go. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Yeah, they didn't. Thank God. But oh the way god. that they don't care about what's going on. If they're just not paying attention. They're fucking eating damn pastrami's or whatever the fuck yeah. they're talking about. And then you see the car. She, the girl breaks out and, run, and Michael's just looking at her. But instead of chasing after, her, he gets in the cop car after he slaughters every one of these cops. And he pulls up, and while he's pulling up, the. Um, Lori, we, there was a scene earlier where Lori and Judy Greer and her husband, they go in the little basement thing. Then all of a sudden, he, I guess he's sitting out. I don't know why. He was just down there, and then they close it. And then I guess like he might have GT5'd it and spawned it there. Yeah. Well, anyways, he's sitting there playing with a gun, and then he notices the cops pull up, and he thinks he, there's going to be some answers. Maybe his little girl's in that car, and it ends up being Michael uh, slaughtered those two cops and fucking gruesome yeah, he put like place. a jackalator on a dude's yeah, head he well he took one dude's head and it's like he tore the insides out and took all the insides out and put a damn poked the eyeballs out and put a light in it and made it look like a pumpkin Jack yeah that was pretty cool that was actually pretty fucking cool and it's sitting in the lap of another cop yeah that he slashed everything out of his throat yeah it was, was great i love the brutality in this film as much as the film's already pissed me off I did like the brutality. I did too. Yeah, it just keeps getting gruesomer. So while all this shit's going down, it was actually a trick, and Michael kills the father. Yeah, yeah and the then basically it, the rest of the, the rest of the climax deals with uh, him going back into the house. Where well, Lori sees where him. Where Lori sees him it. there. Yeah. And, um, and then she basically has the part where the really fucking brutal scene where, like you see in the trailers, where she's at the door, and he grabs her inside from the He's door. He's actually about to kill her, He's dude. About to you kill can her. actually hear almost like her face was getting crushed. 
front. Yeah. So I was like, oh, fuck. No. And, and then, then basically yeah. you see her take the shotgun and blow his fucking fingers <laughs> off. That, that where he's going around where half his hand's been blown off. Yeah. That's actually pretty fucking cool. I looking. like that. Yeah. Yeah. And then we get the scene where she's going upstairs or she goes into the basement thing because basically the, her whole house is like armed and she's got like secret passages. Her yep. basement has like a secret passage. That she and, and this is where like... um uh, Lori's battling out, and then you know Michael's kind of hiding around and stuff. And he comes out, uh, which was actually a creepy scene where he comes out of these statues and stuff, and just goes yeah. after her. And basically, he fucks her up and throws her out of the window. I have an issue. I like to mention Lori goes in this little safe thing, and they're pretty much safe. And Michael would never have found her. So this is where her character becomes dumb. Yeah, she actually fucking opens it and then you can actually hear and see it all going full so now michael knows the where rest of the at. family's down there yeah he's gonna know where he's at where <laughs> so at. he fucks Lori strode up pretty bad gets throws out the window kind of like a the like a part one of the first one payback bit you know bitch yeah and then did the same thing to her and it even does the copy where he looks down and does that music, music and then she's she gone. gets up yeah yeah and, she's and gone. she disappears he's like huh and then um this is when the little girl arrives, which that scene where she's like freaking out all those faces. That yeah, was cr creepy. That was good. Well, she finds her mom. They go in the little thing. And then this is where I did love the score of this. Yeah. This is where it gets really creepy. And because he knows that they're down there and he has to break the steel, this is none, another inhumane part. Right. Where he, he picks up. puts those over the yeah, whole Yeah, well, furniture. this thing is made of steel. It's like one ton. And you see him just like. <laughs> breaks the fuck out of this steel thing and it opens up the door. Yeah. And then the girl can't see Michael, the the daughter of Lori Strode, and she's playing off like, I don't I can't do it, mom, help me. And that's when Michael's like, all right, I got you because you ain't gonna be able to do it. You're admitting that you're scared. Yeah. When he comes out of the shadows and she goes, tricked ya, boom yeah. and, and then that's what his ass up. blew him right in the face and then yeah. and then uh Lori pops out like, and starts stabbing, stabbing the fuck him out. the fuck yeah. and then pushes him down and this is pretty much where we get the biggest fucking let down let down of I've seen in a Halloween film. Not so, only not only does she traps him in the thing, thing and then gets the guards. She gets them both out. And then realize she, uh, then he looks around and realizes that they actually she booby trapped it to make it look like where it could start a fire. When when she can get him stuck in there. Yeah. He's looking around and he notices everything starts turning on fire and then she lights it up with the thing. She goes, Goodbye, Michael. And then she fucking well, throws the thing and he dies the same as he does in part way two. as part two. So two th three <laughs> things. Uh, there's death. three things. One, one. Well, how the how the fuck? Just how convenient is that for Lori Strode to know that would catch on fire and have all those booby traps in there? Two. Why the fuck did you rip off two by saying that two never happened? And three. And then you did it still end it the same way two fucking exactly. And also, okay. Here's where we also get into it. The end basically ends with them getting away, and we get another big fuck you to the franchise by having them get away in the back of the truck. Yeah, some some, some neighbors pass yeah. through, and, and, and she's like, help us, and the guy's like, yeah, get in, get in. We see so a final shot saved. where it pans down, it shows the granddaughter holding the, the knife. knife. Much like Michael, hinting, I'm I'm pretty much sure like this was Michael. hinting, much like Michael. In four. In four. Yeah. Hinting that she's going to be a killer. You remember in four, Jamie at the end stabbed her her stepmother, stepmother to death, and it shows where she's like be, maybe going to be Michael Myers in the future. And I'm just like, no. Uh, and then two kind of did that with Laurie Strode, and she actually it, depending on the ending, did she die or not? Rob Zombie's Halloween, yeah, too, Rob yeah. Zombie's too. And then people were like saying that's possibly the worst endings of all the Halloween movies. The new one when fucking, did, fucking did, it, did it. Where it panned it, where it shows her grab the knife like she's going to become him. Are you fucking, fucking kidding, kidding me? And if he is human, he did not survive no, the burn. No, there's no. And also, I caught this too when I saw when, when I listened <laughs> to the credits. You can hear his fucking breathing. H hinting, it is hinted that he's still alive. Okay, that fucking goes against everything the movie led up to. If yeah. this is supposed to be the last time you see Michael Myers, how the fuck is he still alive? There is no fucking way. This movie is ungodly fucking messy. I... The pr All right, this has got a 98% approval rating. From audiences. Audiences. People are saying this is what a true sequel does, not the other piece of shit. When the others, if you add it like every sequel that everybody hates, 
builds the entire story of this movie. So yep. <laughs> the, the jokes I on really you. Don't, I, I really don't see the praise for it. I really feel, uh, yeah. like we predicted, this is going to be one of those movies I feel is very overrated. Now, not on a critical standpoint, but on an audience level, I feel is very overhyped. And I overhyped feel it's, fandism. It's, fan, yeah. Fanboyism is way yeah. too strong with this one. Yeah, it me. is. I get that. It's cool seeing Michael back with Laurie and, and John Carpenter. And there were parts of the, there was a couple times with the writing it did work. Like, uh, to yes. be honest, the really the only characters that, uh, the only character I really kind of got into was Judy Greer's character with mm -hmm. the whole her arc I actually enjoyed yeah. Lori Strode she started out cool but toward the end it was a little over top with the whole you know Ellen Ripley-esque yeah. thing that I, going like forward. I said Taken 2 out of the continuity of the storyline ruined it it does it does because there was so much you could have done where you could have mm -hmm. said I would have bought actually you know what I would have bought for 40 years, Michael was a comatose. Yeah, it would have made sense. And then I would have bought where he, he kind of woke up in out of the comatose in the prison. And there that's when they were like calling the reporters, come to prison. Michael's finally awoke from the events it from 2. Been, that's and then they, that's what have built like why everybody comes and goes, Michael, 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 give us your interviews. Come on, talk to us. You know, and then that would have made him still, because he's supernatural in that one, exactly. it would have made more sense that he woke up and he ripped out of prison. Exactly. Yeah, and, you and know, then... That that, went after. You know what's a movie that did that concept better? Uh -huh. Four. Four, he was in a fucking comatose after the second movie. And That's he woke what they up. They should have fucking done. They should have done that because one, you ain't telling me after what I watched that he just said. Rest. Fuck it, I'm out. Yeah, I'm out. Rest me. Then you could have got out. Said, Why would he wait 40 fucking years yeah. to get out? It other makes than, no fucking other than sense. He coincidentally came across these two that wanted to look at him. Okay, why didn't they do that before? Why would you wait 40 years to interview mm -hmm. him in the first place? Yeah. Plot Why, Yeah, and not only that, since... I mean, I'm not trying to take away the events that he did in one was really... Not saying it was bad, but I don't think it was newsworthy... And what makes him stand out from people who's killed twenty people? Yeah, because believe it or not, two as much two has a little bit of has some flaws to it. Yeah. Two showed the progression what Michael Myers and, went. And through. the fact that the whole movie plays off as Haddonfield don't even give a shit. About That's this what dude. I'm saying. Like, are you kidding me? A killer like that? I'm pretty sure that would make newsworthy. At least well, it's because they had to humanize him. Therefore, he the, they're not scared because he's a human. But that's hypocritical because the movie fit, plays but it off like he's still fucking supernatural. Uh, yeah, because the whole movie they're like the boogeyman, the boogeyman, yeah, the boogeyman. I'm sorry, but if my fucking if I had like a guy that just killed a couple people in my neighborhood, it's just and he finally went to jail and he's human and all stuff. We wouldn't do this legendary boogeyman shit. I mean, until you show him become coming back to life, resurrecting, like he did, like two. Like two. Yeah, it says he's unstoppable force. He is the force of nature. He is not human. Then he can't be a boogeyman. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. So, yeah. overall, we've pretty much exhausted everything. Uh, what, anything, like, else anything else that we need else? to go no. into? Um, I mean, hold on, let me think. Um... um the, the the ending credit like you see like you said the ending theme John Carpenter did also John well, Carpenter's fucking score was, was great fucking except amazing the last the like ending. theme he used in the credits it the does get a little I <laughs> thought ADC DC was gonna come out <laughs> yeah I was like what the fuck <laughs> I mean Carpenter I'm sorry man because. I'm going to bitch at Carpenter just for a split second because he did an interview right before opening night. He said this movie is going to downright scare the shit out of you. And he actually confirmed, like, you know, he, he gave this movie praise like King gave it. Yeah. He, like, John Carpenter said this is the best sequel I don't think it can and, be ever be made. It's even better than some of the other yeah. sequels. Like and he all, says all the other even ones. really ups him one, even though he still praises one's his favorite. Yeah, it's... It's just like, oh, are you fucking kidding me? And zombie, or zombie, John, John Carpenter, Carpenter hated the zombie films. And he hated all pretty much all the sequels from his old films, aside from two. Even though he thought two was a little bit of a mess now, which yeah. I don't I don't agree on. Uh, and basically, he said, he... he he bitches at those, and I'm sorry, but for one, Z Zombie Two, uh, Halloween Two, was pretty much tied on level of sh of mess on this film. Yeah. However, you made I'm sorry, Carpenter, but Rod Zombie's Halloween, the f the first movie in 2007, was like Oscar winning compared to this movie. I'm sorry, but yeah, it was 
I'm sorry, but I think Rob Zombie's first Halloween was Oscar winning compared to this. Yeah, I I'm mean, sorry, John. I, I'm sorry, Rob Zombie beat is better than, than this, this one. Yeah, movie. it's not better than the original. Don't yeah. get us wrong. The original is the best, but yeah. the Rob Zombie films, for what they're worth, at least they had the potential that going with. He at least wanted to make it a concluding story. Yeah. He still wanted to do different things. I, with I'm Michael glad Myers. you brought him back as a tent, but. I thought you brought him back poorly. Yeah, it's there, there's uh, as much not you you're, you yeah. you want as to, much guys, as yeah. I want to see future slasher films come back. This isn't really the best i the best way to go for me. Like it, like to start out with it, like to bring it back. So with that, much like we said in our our non spoiler review, this is gonna is definitely was a colossal mess. That is, I'm going with a disaster rating on the film freaks. Yeah, meter. A disaster rating on film freaks meter. Like uh, I knew it might have. I was hoping for mediocrity because I knew from the because we've had that whole year where everybody's like, oh man, they're getting rid of that. That we've all debated for a whole year. Yeah. Per Predictions. So I expect it. Maybe I'll get surprised. If not, maybe average. Maybe it'll do. It can't be any worse than that. I walked out and I didn't think it was that going to be that fucking bad. No, me neither, yeah. man. But yeah, it's like it's weird because there's things I like in this film, but it's it's all it's ruined so because of the fucking, fucking overshadows the the bad overshadows the good in this film to where it's like there's so much things I like in it, but. It's like 30% things I like that are so good, and then the 70% just goes, yeah, they didn't exist. It grabs it onto it yeah. and makes it go away. See layer. It basically got uh, uh, devastation by Thanos. And then after Michael blows up, it's like, all right, we're going to rush to the end. Ding, ding. Like, <laughs> yeah. God damn, that was quick. Yeah. but <laughs> Can yeah. we not get a breather of hugs or but, something? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yeah, the, so far, this was definitely a, cult, a big fucking, like, yeah. mess. Uh -huh. So, with that, yeah. uh, for those of you who have also seen the new Halloween... Oh, well, before we close out, I will say that it, this is my third worst Halloween film of the entire franchise. All of them. Every Halloween yeah, film. Yeah, every Halloween film, this yep. is my third worst, too. Yeah. So... For those of you who have also seen Halloween 2018, uh, let us know in the comments below of what you thought about it and the other films as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you like what you see here, you can feel free to like, subscribe to our channel, and check out more of our other reviews here on our, and on our website at filmfreaks.com. And we'll be seeing you in the next review. We'll see you later. Later.